Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this third installment of Rudolf Steiner on the Alpha and the Omega. Hello, everybody, and welcome Oop. to... Where's that coming from? This oh. third installment of Rudolf Steiner. Yeah. Nice echo in the room. Where were we? Yes, the third installment of Rudolf Steiner and the Alpha and the Omega. And I'm here with Dr. Douglas Gabriel and soon to be joined by Joe Visconti. And my name is John Barnwell. I'm here in the vicinity of Detroit, Detroit, the Straits, as usual. And I'm here with Dr. Gabriel, who's also in the greater Detroit metropolitan area in the, the overthrown state of the Republic, Michigan. And we're here with Joe Visconti, who lives in that hotbed of manipulation, uh, the state of Connecticut, of which he actually ran for governor at one time and has actually served on a city council and run a numerous offices, but we're not going to talk about politics today. There's more important things to address. But Joe is also a Emmy Award winning videographer, and he is the president of the American Shakespeare Theater and a lifelong anthropologist like Douglas and myself. And so, hello, Joe. Hello, guys. Well, I thought that, you know, I'd, I'd launch it off today with this, this like wonderful, wonderful quote of Gus Steiner's because that's who we generally speak about. And, and so I'm going to share this just to, to give us a, a bit of a rudder on our conversation. This is from the Principle of Spiritual Economy, Lecture 10, The God of the Alpha and the God of the Omega. It was in Berlin on May 25th in 1909, it's Collected Works, Volume 109. And he says, regardless of whether you regress or progress, whether you seek God in the Alpha or in the Omega, you will be able to find him. What is important is that you find him with your own heightened human power. Those forces necessary to find the God of the Alpha are the primal forces of the human being. However, the forces necessary to find the God of the Omega must be acquired here on Earth by striving human beings themselves. It makes a difference whether one goes back to Alpha or forward to Omega. He who is content with finding God and just wants to get into the spiritual world has the choice of going forward or backward. However, the individual who is concerned that humanity leave the earth in a heightened state must point the way to Omega, as did Zarathustra. Any thoughts? Well, thus spoke Zarathustra. I mean, yes, indeed, uh, the future Omega is what we have to think about because it's coming at us and most of the time it brings fear. And uh, when you look to the past, then you're gonna really definitely get caught up in all kinds of problems. So trying to be in the moment and also not be afraid of the future is really the task of today's world. And as Joe and I were saying earlier this morning, it's so difficult because all of the forces that are, have been um, basically created to try to take us out of that realm of the natural inclination to desire the divine, to desire union with the divine. And uh, you can think whether it's uh, shots in your arm or pills or uh, alcohol and tobacco in every corner, or whether or not it's uh, the splicing of your genes to take away the God uh, a gene from the human being, it doesn't matter. Everywhere you look, there is an attempt to do what Araman wants, which is to annihilate human spiritual development. And it is somewhat frightening, but we always like to say, and I've noticed in some of the remarks lately, 
in the, some of the talks we've had that people say, thank heavens that we always give different, a variety of different ways out of the mess that we're in. Well, I'd like to say that um, the, uh, and I've mentioned this before, the atmosphere we're living in across the world, not just America, across the world, the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere is just full of lies and conflict, rumors, doubt, fear. Um, it's conducive to the incarnation of Araman. And, um, and so we are living right now, right here in real time, biblically, uh, for an incarnation. And many people say, well, when will it come in 2030, 2040, 2080? Um, how much worse can it get with the lies and everything we're feeling in this atmosphere of, uh, of polarization, people trying to defend lies and truth? So I think we're very, very close. Uh, the next step would be um, what we saw in Nazi Germany or in uh, Russia, where we had communism and we would lose our complete rights. I mean, we're one, we're one step away from that totalitarian takeover. We've watched it uh, come around all of us. And I think it's the prayers in this country, the uh, instinct that Rudolf Steiner said, the Americans had an instinct very hard to enslave us because of our instinctive nature. Uh, he didn't like love us that much in America at the time, but we do have that and we, uh, through, Russia, I believe, will be the hope of the world, but it's going to be um, really this this oppression we're feeling uh, and the lies and the inability for people to defend the lies or say anything. I mean, I'm flying some pretty radical flags on my house in a horrible uh, communistic town here, and people's heads are politically blowing up because of it, um, and they can't stop it, but it's the, this the oppression is here. It's... And I, and I always like to tell everyone, keep the faith. Uh, even if you can't speak out, there are people that can speak for you because if many people say things on social media or whatever, I mean, they're going to be sent to human resources if they're going to be divorced and fired and live under a bridge in a box. There's You can't speak. Already we can't speak. So we're, they're ramping up. Um, Armand is ramping up this totalitarian um, power um, and it's being fed with lies and I think lies are the best thing because we all can see in real time the whole world that has a phone can see everything at once and there's no lie in the evidence you know Hunter laptop not to be political but it's there and it everyone sees it and yet no justice can be done no law enforcement there's no one in charge the lies are in charge Yes, and, and that gets into the, the crux of the matter, and it kind of uh, connects us with uh, the talk I did the other day with Douglas, in that we were discussing the meta narratives, the cultural meta narratives that throughout history have, have been presented to the populace in an uh, attempt to get them to toe the line, whatever the line, that line might be for that particular imperium. Nonetheless, this has gone on. You can see it on clay tablets, Mesopotamia and cuneiform. And you can see it on the temple walls in Egypt, you know, with Pharaoh smiting his enemy. So there's always going to be this kind of a uh, spectacular drama that we're faced with. I remember a few years ago thinking, Mankind has finally got to the point to where if they use the kind of resources that are available that they could actually lift uh, mankind up into a better uh, state of living. But the powers that be, that doesn't help them with their version of what they think is going on. And so right. you have this struggle, you have this, and uh, it goes back and in the, in the, uh, the uh, study guide that I put together for the talk I did with Douglas the other day is also applicable to what we're discussing here. And I'm going to uh, trouble the people here. I'm going to read something I read last time, but I'm going to read the, the second part because it, that's really the crux of the matter in terms of the Alpha and the Omega. And this is a, a quotation 
that I'm getting from uh, Rudolf Steiner, and that's from a course for young doctors. It took place on Easter of April 24th in 1924. And uh, now I have to get back where I was here. Uh, yes, here it goes. Christianity itself appears in the world as something that can only be understood slowly and by degrees, and for an external, though not an inner point of view. It is very strange that the deeper sides of Christianity have, in reality, not been fathomed at all by human beings. Christianity came into the world as an objective fact, and the receptive faculties of man were not strong enough to develop the real essence of it in all directions. The objective consequences, therefore, are that Christianity is everywhere living in the subconsciousness, but that for three or four centuries, it has been completely ruined by man. Human beings ruin Christianity through their intellect. As well as this, there are terribly dilettante institutions that have been set up in recent times at universities. Originally, there were four traditional uh, faculties, namely philosophy, theology, jurisprudence, and medicine. The rest have been added, have been based on utter unenlightenment and misunderstanding. Faculties for such subjects as political science, national economy, and the like originated from thoughts which no longer knew anything at all of the essentials. What has not been understood is, is all, at all is that to begin with, four men were sent out by Christ to claim Christianity. Matthew, the theologian, Mark, the jurist, Luke, the physician, and John, the philosopher. This fact, which has very deep roots in spiritual life, things are at present only in germ and have yet to blossom and bear fruit. It's also connected with the realization that the texts of the four Gospels cannot completely tally because the one is written from the standpoint of the theologian, the other from the standpoint of the philosopher, a third from the standpoint of the jurist, and a fourth from the standpoint of the physician. This must be thoroughly understood because it has not been understood, because the Luke Gospel has not yet been accepted as a guide for inner will to healing. There is no truly Christian will to healing in modern thought. There is instead an attitude that has crept into spiritual culture through Arabism, which has gripped Christianity like a pair of forceps. It's very interesting that Christianity, which originated in Asia, came across to Europe and spread abroad in Europe. And there it's a, it's a conversation about the historical impulses of the, of the ninth century that took place in the court of Harun al-Rashid, where the, in that milieu, Rudolf Steiner says that they prematurely developed faculties that pertain to the consciousness soul. And because of that, the, the, the aramonic impulses tend to come too early before mankind is prepared to be able to deal with them in a wholesome way. And so you see at that time, the consciousness soul impulse intervening into history and only to receive kind of a, a response correction through the deeds of the grail with Parsifal, being able to incorporate the consciousness soul as a prototype for the development of a modern humanity. And so that's where we stand at this point. And we came out of the intellectual soul and the intellectual soul is basically the thinking of human beings that is reflecting upon the sentient soul's experience of perception. But the consciousness soul is very singular, and it is not inclined towards community building. It is, in fact, an island of one, and it is a very lonely place to be. And in our time, we can see that that is true. How did we get here? Because of what John just indicated from that reading, modern science. Modern science says they know, because Kyo means to know, but they don't know. They have no clue. What we're being told by science is just the newest lie, the newest theory. 
And so what Joe was em emphasizing here, we live in a sea of falsehood. And in the conscious and soul era, it is our job to try to figure out what are the spiritual eternal elements that can be then cognized by the consciousness soul. And that's very difficult to do uh, because you have the what should be the fourth estate that is representing the poor people like you and I to bring truth away from out of what we're being told from the three other estates, the state of the monarchy. And we are still under the control of the British monarchy, whether people want to acknowledge it or not. The clergy, we are still led by the nose by the great leaders of different religions, for instance, uh, in the Vatican, the Pope believes in open borders. Open borders, he's complicit with murder. So you want to talk about a religion that is promoting murder. How is that a truth? That's not what we expect to come from religion. And essentially, uh, what we have now uh, uh, is that the fourth estate has become the fifth column. It is, in fact, an attack upon us. Instead of being the information news agency that brings truth, it's the disinformation agency that brings propaganda and con mind control, really, when it comes down to it. Uh, for instance, right now, no one seems to be able to get the story straight about what's happening between Russia and Ukraine with the Wagner group, which is a mercenary group. And the leader of it is called Putin Chef. He is the person that was blamed during the election for sending out all the Russian disinformation through Concord Catering. Later, it was found out Concord Catering, catering wasn't even in existence at that time. Putin's chef had gone over to becoming a mercenary, and he wasn't doing information warfare. And we pointed out at the time that it was happening that it was a new group called the Global Engagement Center, which is the seat of the lies and propaganda that used to be called Radio Free America. And it propagandized all other nations with lies. And if you were in another nation and you heard this broadcast, you would laugh because it had nothing to do with reality or truth. It was completely made up nonsense. And that is who became in control of what the National Defense Authorization Act allows, which is propag uh, propagandizing the population of America for the sake of getting compliance with the current administration. That means the White House, the, the presidential administration's policies and narratives. And so we pointed out that it was the British uh, Strategic Communication Laboratory that has a sister group called um, Cambridge Analytica. And those two groups were blamed on the Democrat and Republican side for creating all of this disinformation that was on the internet, was blamed on Russia, but it was actually the groups I just mentioned that was doing it. So it is hard to tell with the fact checkers who are not fact, they're not checking facts or the Ministry of Truth, which are basically the new forms of squelching free speech on the social network systems, all of those are paid for by people who have a lot to gain by manipulating the minds of those who are listening. We know that $1.5 billion of that came from Eric Schmidt. A lot of it came from Mark of the Zuckerberg. Uh, a bunch of it came from George Soros, as we know. The, th these were billions of dollars given to make sure that the current lie, whatever the current lie is, it's like the current theory in science is settled science. No, it's not. Tomorrow they'll come up with a new theory and the old theory is a lie. It's a blatant lie because it's never withdrawn and you create elemental beings called uh, specters and phantoms when you lie. And if you don't call them back and uh, rectify those lies, they go on living as separate entities, which then can become demonic. And that's what we're facing in this age. It's a disinformation program that is so profound that you can't even imagine it. And it's extremely difficult to discern. I, I love to pick up right here. Um, John, you had mentioned something um, in what you read about life and what's coming in as we talk about this, moving around from the politics, which is basically policy making and the way you live your lives. Uh, and people think, well, religion, spirit. No, no, politics is everything. They want to completely take over every aspect of reality in under politics and suck in everything about it. But this is really um, uh, science. What we're looking at today is healing. 
where's healing anymore? The doctors work with the body and the body heals itself. They don't know how it heals itself. Why wouldn't they work more towards discovering how the body heals itself and tap into that reality versus what's really happening through big pharma? And so what we have is we have um, kind of wrote this down while we're, while we're, while we're talking here. And um, it's really lies against truth. And uh, it's basically organic life through the etheric versus digital life through electricity. This is the war that's going on right now. You cannot have healing without pharma, without technology. You cannot have organic life, which is tied into nature and the hierarchies. They'll give you nature, but they won't give you the hierarchies. They'll also strip away higher demonic. We could hardly speak about that in the political realm. They think you're crazy uh, that there's anything behind the Soros or anything behind the left or even the American Brotherhood. Uh, to make it seem, and we see this a lot in the right wingers, which I'm kind of connected with, but they kind of go off the deep end with Bilderberg and this and that, and that's all true. But what's behind it? What is the higher reality? And what's really going on is lost. The churches didn't give it to us. Satan, God, Lucifer, we didn't get much there. So the whole idea of what's the cosmology? People don't know where to turn. They don't know this information we're speaking about. And it's so broad and so deep that it's very hard. And I talk to a lot of lay people. And it really gets down to uh, freedom. <laughs> well, Lucifer brought us freedom. Anything that's looking to take away our freedom and our rights uh, truthfully. And this is why I called you both this morning. Because I see what's coming next. We all have seen it in the religious life, the spiritual life. Uh, will be outlawed and they'll give you as i saw in a nice little tiktok they'll give you the jesus not necessarily the christ the cosmic christ um that's rudolf steiner speaks about the one-sided jesuit jesus they'll give you that but that's a tolerant jesus that's going to allow everything evil to become a civil right and that you should tolerate but you're not going to have the wholesome sinless uh helpful saint paul um uh, condemning part of uh, christianity uh, which condemns go forth and sin no more well they don't want that and so what we're really looking at for lay people that may be tuning into this is there is a war it's going on there's an incarnation incarnation technology is here it can be helpful and beneficial but how would you deduce or figure out when it's helpful when it's malevolent and, and so we're in that time, but there is really no pushback. I mean, there's three of us and maybe another dozen people that I've watched out there that can touch pieces of the cosmology. But there is no place for a, a simple cosmology of what we're speaking about. How does this level uh, trickle down? And it's really about health and healing. Just about everything is trying to kill us. That's in science. That's in medicine. That's in foodstuffs. Even the whole foods coming off owned by Amazon, that it's somehow going to be better food for you. You can tear that apart too. But um, bringing that consciousness in which we're doing about the cosmology, this is something Armin does not want. He does not want a cosmic cosmology uh, that there is a spiritual life. There's something higher that we come from. And it doesn't matter the, the religion or how you adapt it, but um, it is the digital life versus the organic life. It's a war going on. And um, and then next, I just texted you, both you guys, we've got to live another 17 years. I mean, a lot of the battle will be over by uh, by 2040. So I've got, I'm going to be 86. I know you guys are going to be 88, 89. Uh, we've got to stay in the game because this culmination is occurring. There's nobody, there's nothing out there that's going to give anyone. Even anthroposophy, God love it, and the war stand, it's completely at war. Um, and there's there's nowhere to find a simple cosmology that makes sense and aligns with truth that everybody in their soul feels. Well, I wouldn't say there's there's no place because what I do, I always defer to scripture. When you get back and you look at the first 14 verses of the Gospel of John and you look at the Lord's Prayer, and if you could live with those to the point to where it actually becomes a part of your manner of being, it provides you with a different relationship to the struggle. And that's kind of what I've stressed the last few podcasts is people are trying to figure out, well, what, what should I expect? 
And I was telling a friend the other day, and I said, well, you know, when you seriously begin to work with the principles of spiritual science, it becomes a different experience when you go to sleep because it helps align you with that that Christ impulse that's, that's over, over lighting all of mankind, waiting for us to take up the challenge and, and strive towards it in our waking life so that we can be refreshed through its influences in the world of sleep at this point. Eventually, mankind will evolve to a point to where they will be able to receive that guidance from Christ himself while they're in their waking state, which is, well, that really kind of would boggle the mind of, of your <laughs> typical scientist, but that's <laughs> what we're talking about. And so in living in that omega consciousness, it's as though you're preparing for a guest, you're preparing to be able to develop that relationship to Christ. And what is that relationship to Christ? That's the Sophia, the wisdom that's capable of, of forming a grail, so to speak, to be able to receive those impulses. Absolutely. Steiner said that it's the Sophia of Christ that we need now, the wisdom of Christ. Sophia means wisdom, of course, Sophia. And that's what we need. We need a cosmic Christ so that you can get a cosmology, so you can, when you hear these things, you can actually analyze them. And John is right. It really, there is a space, and the space is very simple one law. There's only one law. There's only one thing you have to do if you really want to be uh, pious and uh, develop the virtues and receive the mercy and grace of God. And that's um, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and your neighbor as yourself. Well, look at the attacks upon first off the heart. Right now, we know that myocarditis is, is so prevalent that people are dropping over you know, the guy who works in my yard. His name is Gabriel also. Uh, just had these terrible heart problems. I won't go into them, but this is happening all over the place. You see it. So the attack against the heart is the attack against the rhythm between the heart and the lung, which is disturbing your sleep, really. Because in sleep, there's a beautiful balance of one to four between uh, your breath and your heart. But during the day, you stress out. And so there's an attack because if all electromagnetic frequencies basically mess up your body. And then you have the fact that uh, you are an automaton, that you just go to work so you can make some money, so that you can pay your bills, so that you can go to work and make some money to pay your bills. And then there's the attack on the soul. Well, the soul, the spirit was out, uh, outlawed uh, back in the late ninth, uh, ninth century. Outlawed. There's no more spirit. If you want spirit, you got to go through a priest. You got to go through a guru. You got to do talk to somebody spiritual. But you know you can't get that through a scientist. So now soul. There are literally psychologists who will tell us now that the soul doesn't exist. And then you have the digital warriors who are telling us that we are nothing more than uh, programmable uh, automatons, and that we'll be able to be hacked and we'll be able to be manipulated as soon as. Uh, Elon Musk gets a chance. He's going to, for, for free, put a chip in everyone's head so that you can go to the internet and go to Twitter without a computer. It'll be in your head, okay? These attacks sound ridiculous. And the uh, so the attack on the heart, I can name 100 attacks on the heart. I can name 100 attacks on the soul because everything that gives you soul, first off, that your body, soul, and spirit, that's been thrown out. Now you're just a body. You're not a soul. You're not a spirit. Spirit's outlawed. Only the church can give you that. Soul? Well, soul is for psychologists and poets. And, you know, poets have no value. Artists have no value in today's age. So what's this attack, though, upon your mind? That subliminal programming that's in almost every single advertisement from any major company has subliminal programming in it, hypnotizing you into being a good, hairless ape consumer because that's the way they think of you. You are nothing but a hairless ape and they want to follow your patterns of consumerism and literally predict the next thing that you will buy. And they can quite accurately. And the attack on the strength, well, that's what we mentioned before. Everywhere we're being bombarded so that there is no strength left. There's no strength to be able to even make the world work 
especially here in America, uh, where you have to have a car, you have to have insurance, you have to have all these things before you are even a human being that can work in the economic sphere that has been created for us called the free market. And by the way, there is no free market. And they'll call it democratic free market. There's no democracy in America. There's not even a constitutional republic anymore. So what are we dealing with here? Learning to love yourself, love God, and love everyone around you. That also implies loving yourself. So where do you see people loving everyone around them? <laughs> Go ahead. Look really hard. The news every night should be telling us about the, the good work that people are doing because it's hidden. It's kind of like Satan, Aramon, Mephistopheles, Baal, Beelzebub, whatever you want to call this being of darkness, uh, really wants to extinguish our light. It really wants to take over our free will, as Joe said. And as soon as they can turn these beings and the minions who work for these beings, these demons, as soon as they can steal your willpower and steal your freedom, then that's it. You really don't have any ground to stand upon for your own development of your own uh, processes of ascension. So the answer to this is very simple. There's the prayer. What gets between you loving God? What gets between you loving your neighbor? That's where you should start to work. And most of the really great things I see that counteract globalism and the uh, what they'd call the New World Order and the elite billionaires of the World Economic Forum, work on a local level. Grow a garden. Create a garden club. Buy from your farmer's market. Buy from your own area. Empower your sheriff in your own regional area, in your own county, because the sheriff is more powerful than any federal force. Federal force is now been so exaggerated. It's hyper control. It's hyper materialism. It's hyper uh, propaganda and it's hyper manipulation. And at this point, it's perfectly legal. These things are on the law books. They can do these things. They can subliminally control you through any kind of device. There's nothing that says they can't. And so in this age, we have to find our own path. And as we do, discernment is one of the most important things so you don't get killed by your environment. And then one good rule, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Yes, and love God, love the hierarchies, love the be spiritual beings that are here to bring us this uh, information and this grace. Uh, because God, according to the Bible, and that's another paradigm problem, because an old man with a gray beard and that cosmology is has got to be updated a little bit. And I think it does. I think I mentioned before on the show how I, I went around one day, asked everybody, anywhere I was, coffee shop, do you believe in angels? Do you believe in angels? I think one person out of 100 said, no, I don't. Everybody said they believe in angels. Because really, again, we're, we're, where's the war again? Uh, turning us into machines, techno machines, or or us becoming angelic in the future. And so again, people do. I I do have faith in a common man, but I do understand that people are really having a hard time wanting to voice how they feel. They're not lukewarm. They're afraid to talk. They're afraid to speak. And um, and so this is really one of the problems. And I I kind of came up with something. I think you all have mentioned it before. And it's about memory and about thinking process. This is pretty simple. I tell everyone I know, where are your memories stored? No, really. Because if we cut the gray matter in your brain, we're not going to find any, you know, any integrated circuits or monolithic structure in there where memories can be retrieved. Where are your memories stored with your emotions and your ability to recall sense and smell and touch in your mind? Of course, your brain is working with something, but it's not in your brain. It's not in your heart. It's a muscle. This is just tendons. Where is the thinking apparatus stored that's actually uh, conceiving concepts? And when we kind of look up and we think, and if you start to talk to people about that immediately, they don't know because science can't prove we're memory. They're going to tell you about the synapses and the activity of brain activity, which is true like the heart. But where are the memories? Where is the database for your life? Science can't tell you. We know it exists because we all live it. 
And right there begins the fallacy. Again, the problem becomes for people who want to talk to them like, you're right. And then they get afraid, but, well, but what? Because their cosmology, which is twisted from being raised in this century, doesn't know what to do next. Because if you remove that, they become afraid. Well, then what do I believe in? Because this complete overshadowing of Armin materialistic thought and education starts to creep in on their mind when you open it to show them that there is no memories in your body. And they'll believe it, but there's you can see fear come right over them. The subject has changed after I've watched it, I've monitored it because they don't know. They didn't, if they don't build this cosmology, or at least as Rudolf Steiner said, with the philosophy of spiritual activity, which he renamed from the philosophy of freedom, their spiritual activity is not seeking. It is not prepared to seek to wonder and be okay with seeking and wondering in an adventure. If you remember as a kid, we go in the woods and go off and you go so far with my sisters and all of a sudden it's like, wait a second, are we too far from home? How do we get back? You know, you get the feeling you kind of go back home before you lose the ability to find home. Well, the, they don't have the ability like we do. We're off as adventurers like Lewis and Clark, thousands of miles in the spiritual world and all this, all these things that that we study and we we think on and we meditate on and, and we wonder about. So we can go millions of miles away from ourselves and come back. They can't. They have the ability, the average Joe, to want to, but the education, false religions, has put this capsule almost out over their mind, and that's where kind of working out. They have to spiritually work out um, and not just have the simple faith of the John Gospel or the Foundation Stone or so many other methods. That's all great and that's there, but getting them out to want to uh, the general public to have, find a path. Most like this, I'm growing my hair like John the Baptist. <laughs> I'm going to get a, a, one of those big overcoats and a staff and get on the corner like with the homeless people. Hey! <laughs> no, really, but if you think about it, it is a problem. People do want to, but fear takes them over. Fear they don't know, they don't understand, and they don't even realize. I see it. I'm sure you all see it. And I think really that's where we're at. And the more oppression it comes on, the more searching for and wanting to speak out, but speak against what? The authority of Rome and government? And so the general public is in a quagmire right now. And I think they're all bubbling collectively. I don't care what side of the aisle or what you believe. Everyone is bubbling right now thinking it's a good thing. That is a good thing. It's chaotic, but it's a good thing. And I do have faith in God and faith in the human being. Um, but there will be a lot of uh, collateral political damage in the next seven years coming from where the establishment it wants to bring us. Yeah, and when you talk to people that uh, try to strive into the realm of what we would call apocalyptic thinking, which would be the type of thinking that looks forward to the Omega rather than looking so much backwards to the Garden of Eden that they're looking forward to the New Jerusalem, but that's a difficult study. And I mean, if one really wants to, to take that challenge up, then there's nowhere else to go except for uh, the scripture itself. And it's interesting to note that, that when you look at that, you, and if you look at what Rudolf Steiner's indicated, although there's many people out there that saying, we're at the end, these are the end days and all that. Well, in light of spiritual science, well, these were the beginning of, of an end. It's like there's, it comes in waves and, and we're experiencing one of the waves, the apocalyptic waves that going into the, the uh, period of the seventh trumpet, you know, and that yep. we have that challenge coming up and everybody has to be able to, what is a trumpet? It's some, it's a sounding. It has to do with the faculty of hearing. And so you have to have that discrimination regarding things that you hear, because when you start looking at what's out there, there's so much that is false, that is counterfeit, that is a counter image of what is needed you have to take responsibility for your own thoughts. You can't let your thoughts be provided to you from outside too much because 
that's the ultimate trap. And so you have that whole inductive uh, reasoning principle that came forward from uh, Francis Bacon back in the Elizabethan age. And that's still the encrusted mindset yes. of scientism. Yeah. And that it's it's been captured by this premature manifestation of the consciousness soul in a form that wasn't open-ended such as we find within the Grail Mysteries. But keep in mind, within the Grail Mysteries, and Rudolf Steiner is very clear on this point, he says if you read scriptures of any religion, or if you go to uh, esoteric traditions themselves, they speak in picture language. And if you go to the Apocalypse of St. John, what is that? Well, that's a, a story told in picture language. And what that does is that gives you a greater freedom of mobility in your thinking to be able to take your thoughts and transform your thinking into images to get away from that abstract thinking and be able to enter into imaginative thinking because ultimately it has to do with the transformation of the consciousness soul into the spiritual soul which is prepared to receive like a grail the impulses of the spirit self that is to come in the sixth period. Yes, and Francis Bacon, of course, uh, as well as basically the modern materialistic science that came out of Jundi Shapur and the Arab influence that came across Northern Africa and into Spain that started our universities in Europe. These type of idols, that's really what they are. The, it's like the golden calf. It's like Solomon who had 900, well, he had 900 concubines or 700 wives and 900 concub 200 concubines, 900 non-Hebrew wives. And each one of them, he built an altar for the God, supposed God that they believed in. Those are all idols. And oftentimes the idols and the gods of the Mesopotamian area later became demons uh, as reinterpreted by others at a period afterwards. So what is good at one time may be very evil at another time. So what are the idols that you worship? That's whatever you do. What do you do with your time? Where do you put your focus? Where do you put your meditation, your prayers? Whatever that is, that's what you worship. And so it's really best that in a way that you keep focused to this one single rule, which is to love God with all your heart. We'll leave it at, at that and your neighbor, uh, because that is not an idol. That is uh, basically the whole picture of Alpha and Omega. And what does the book of Revelation say? It says that it, it is Alpha and Omega, a description of the manifestation of Christ from the time that the angels were thrown from heaven to the incarnation to, of course, the woman with the moon beneath her feet coming forth, bringing the new Christ and being, which is you, which is her child that will rule the nations with an iron rod. And it is a fantastic victory story for Christ. The omega of Christ is the complete redemption of all, even evil. And so when I look at the book of Revelation, yes, I can see all the different challenges and the the, the, the bowls of wrath and the angels that are blowing the trumpets and all these horrible things are all happening all around us, yes. But that happens as you approach the threshold of the spiritual world when you're an initiate. So an initiate already has all of those things happening to them, probably already has happened to them. And they've entered into a uh, stage towards the Omega, which like Paul, he was raised to the third heaven. There are also seven heavens and others have been raised translated like Enoch and Melchizedek, uh, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel. It's, they've been raised directly through ascension, the same process that Christ went through into these heavenly realms. And nothing can stop that because that's the future. And so every single good thing that you do is building a celestial mansion in the future. Rudolf Steiner calls it the Jupiter incarnation of the earth. Nothing is lost. With the Tibetans, every time they do a meditation, they take the whole thing, the incredible visualization, the what they call the, uh, the uh, sutra, mantra, uh, uh, vajra, and tantra aspects of it. They take all the meditation practice that they have 
And in the end, what do they do? They move it out of sight of themselves and put it into the spiritual world called the illusory realm or the Tushita heaven for the benefit of all sentient beings. And if, the, if you're doing that, then as you look out upon the earth, you'll find that these celestial mansions that you're building in the future, the Omega Christ that is described in the uh, book of Revelation as the new Jerusalem, we might look at it as a new Eden. We must pick the fruit of the tree of knowledge and we must gain the fruit of the tree of life. And once those are attained, a new Jerusalem can be attained because that's what's in the heart of new Jerusalem. So we have to put aside these idols and the idols are everything that science tells you. Everything that the, the falsehood politicians tell you, everything that the um, even well-intentioned doctors tell you, the pharmaceutical companies tell you, because why? These, the, these are corporate alignment with government monopolies. And they are the ones who are really the mouthpiece of Ahriman right now, the mouthpiece of Satan. They, out of their mouth, preach lies that are so profound that if you believe them, you will no longer know the difference between what is right and wrong. You won't understand the tree of knowledge. You will not be able to discern what you're hearing in the media as whether it's the fourth estate's help for truth or whether it's the uh, fifth column attack upon you personally. And so we are in a war yeah. and this war is profound and it is waged in your own heart, but it also wants to get your mind, your soul and your strength as, as the prayer, the prayer, the only prayer we need uh, that can help us uh, dispel all these idols, see through them, see what they are, and come out of our own discernment and our own process of meeting the being of Sophia, the Holy Spirit, that we can then attain our own process of ascension. And that process is all based upon truth, not the lies that we live in in today's world. Hallelujah. That was a good one, Doug. And I'll pick up a couple of things you said, which I was about to say, and it's great. The news media, the news media where you, Rudolf Steiner says, is the threshold. All of humanity is reading the news, the newspapers, the headlines, those images, John, not the images we want to have, the imagination and pictures, but the pictures and the headlines. This is the threshold and the lies are here. And it's amazing that Armin, being the karma of Lucifer, who said men must know the difference between good and evil if they're to become gods. Now, <laughs> Armin's saying, no, we don't want them to know the difference between good and evil. That's what this is about. So we're presented daily on our phones, Newsmax, Fox News, New York Times. I don't care what app you have, what you're reading, uh, where, did, who are you and what you tune into and what do you believe? How do you know it's true? I think just about everybody today, after what we've seen in the last seven years with Trump, like him or not, <laughs> bull in a china shop, everything they did to him, they did that they accuse him of, they have done. And even the, the things that happened in Mar-a-Lago, they needed a cover for what Biden and his son are doing. Not to be political, because this is really religious. Our country was sold out. They sold our country for money to adversaries and to enemies, and they needed a cover to pretend Trump was doing the same with information he had, and he he walked into it like a <laughs> like a dummy. But again, it's not the politics of it; it's the manipulation uh, of the news media, which is the threshold. And as you just said earlier, we're constant. Mankind is constantly being forced. We're crossing the threshold together. You're seeing it every day in the news. Everyone's wondering what do they do? What do they not do? What do they listen to? What don't they want to hear? Because every time we reject a piece of the truth, or we don't want to hear about it because it makes us uncomfortable, especially if you have children in school. I don't know how parents are not either going to, you know, go not violent, but just how would you cope with children in school as, as what you see coming down? You've lost control. I just posted something from a lady this morning. Her son is 13 years old and she had to get his permission to get the United Healthcare information about her. Her son had to give her permission at 13 years old so she could see his records and what was going on. That's happening right now here today. The 13 year old, this goes hand in hand with the desire for the Epstein worlds to lower the age of consent. And why would that be? For future crimes against children? 
How about to cover past crimes against children and everything that we see that's happened? So there's this push right now to take away the rest of the parental rights, make children. The UN is doing it right now, talking about it, discussing it, lowering the age of the consent where the children can at least, I don't know what age, they haven't said, seven, eight, nine years old, could have sex with man-love relationship group. Uh, so we're going there where they remove that. They, in, they go with below the uh, age of consent and... Um, which will destroy the next generation or two. And so this is all being set up for the incarnation of Armin so that there, the lies continue, blasphemy, you name it, all under the banner of civil rights. So that threshold is being crossed by all of us. It's not just the news media. It's not just headlines. It's, it's John the Baptist. It's every prophet at the gates of Jerusalem saying the truth, and people did not want to hear it. Herod, covering his ears, can't hear it. And so how many of us don't want to hear it? Because you have to change your life. You have to either combat it, be involved. And once you're involved, I mean, I've done it in politics, you can't go back to a normal life. The world sees you a certain way. That's what you're going to be. If you're a truth teller, they don't want you in working for a corporation. You may say something about what you see they're doing wrong. So truth tellers are, are left out. So people are afraid to even think about the truth. And this is where uh, not knowing the difference between good and evil, that's where the battle is right now, right? And soon to come, goodness, religious people, people, pious people that pray will be soon outlawed from talking to their children about it. Because uh, uh, if you're Jewish, mm, you got a God with no name that's invisible. If you're Christian, you got a guy that rose from the dead and wears his body. Oh, no, no, no. These are nice fairy tales, but no longer are you going to let your children learn these things. They have rights not to have to go to Hebrew school or Sunday school to hear these things. We'll be there in five years or less. We will be there. They're setting this, the tone, and this is why they're moving towards the children under the sexuality, which is so disgusting. You can't speak about it. Again, it's unspeakable to even want to have these conversations. And so if I was going to run for office again, what am I going to do? I'm going to debate a Someone, I'll call him a Democrat or Republican, that's all for transgender and all this stuff being taught to third graders. Huh? We're going to have that conversation? That's the debate stage? It's unspeakable things that they, and so you can't speak about them. And, uh, but everybody that knows, but nobody knows what to do about it. And we're really, really in a in a biblical choice. It's like a a dividing line. The, I mean, we're being split. You're either going to say something or you're just going to remain silent. And if you're silent, listen at home, you're condoning it. If you don't have the courage to speak it out, which you could lose your job for, then and then be out living under a bridge, or you have to be quiet and condone it and whisper. And so this is a really telling time, biblical. But it's a great time. So we've seen the transition from Christianity into what we could call it mammonanity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or uh, mammonology, you know, that uh, this whole idea of uh, the worship of mammon is what we're being force fed. And that's, that's very, very clear and of course elsewhere in scripture it says you know my name is legion well what does that mean that means legion that means there's a whole bunch of, of them in that army that's going to put you through all these changes and it's all for your own benefit keep in mind that that christ is with you you are never alone and he said, I shall be with you always. You know, I shall be with you to the end of the earth and, and on and on. But it has to do with your capacity to be able to take that up in a living way so that it becomes a real working force in your life. And then you'll see all kinds of craziness going on all around you, but you'll still have that. It's like in, in the... Uh, Homer's uh, in the in the Odyssey, where uh, he straps himself to the mast of the of the ship, right, so that he doesn't become overwhelmed by the 
Scylla and Charybdis when he travels through, that, that, that there's these two opposing forces. And you have to understand that the Christ impulse is the balance of those opposing forces, that we're not charging into them straight head on in a kind of dualistic battle of good and evil, that, that goodness is to be found through mildness. It's a principle of love as being a mediating force between those two extremes of immateriality and overly materialized impulses. So that that's that center in which we're striving for. And it's uh, beautiful in, in seeing uh, him strapped. I could see myself strapped to the mast with, with the furies flying at me. And I, I feel that way at least once or twice a day, it seems like. And that's okay. That's why we're here. And so don't think, well, geez, I'm sorry. But, you know, there's an old Chinese saying, may I be cursed to be born in interesting times. And so I guess we're getting what we paid for. Price of admission is being born. And they're trying to take that away. So Let's be glad we're here and be glad to know that there are resources out there that Rita Steiner's 350 plus volumes of work is out there for those that are diligent that wish to study or just spend your time before you go to sleep with the 14, first 14 verses of the Gospel of John and the Lord's Prayer. and Just consecrate your sleep so that you gain the greatest benefit from it. And it's as to regards to this podcast, it gives me a wonderful opportunity to, to discuss these things with my dear friends and have all kinds of people out there eavesdropping on our conversation. And But this is made possible by Douglas and Tyla. And, but also, I want, I want to call out Vadim, who's out there in Central Asia somewhere, has been very helpful and you just got to love this guy. He's just out there. It couldn't be farther away. And so I want to say hi to him, call him out. And also all these other people that have helped make this a wonderful experience for myself in my wishes to share with you the wisdom of these two gentlemen. Well, I'm glad you did that, John. And, and don't forget to mention your book, but I'll hold it up. There it is. This is one of the best books you can get that's going to help you understand the cosmology that we keep referring to. And I just want to underscore what Joe said. We're all on the threshold between the physical and spiritual world. We, as humanity, are being pulled across. And your fear, your doubt, your hatred come up to bite you like the Furies. And so that's what's happening to all of humanity right now. So the good news is, for those who become initiated and conquer their fear, doubt, and hatred, with, of course, uh, love, char you know, charity, grace, mercy, all the higher virtues. Once you cross the threshold, it is the most wonderful thing because now we're getting dispensations from the spiritual world where the, the superhuman beings are coming to help us. And the it just untold the amount of spiritual beings, hosts of angels, the nine hierarchy, the trinity, uh, the, all the saints are here and they are crossing that threshold with us. They're coming into the world as easily as we are now going into their world. And that means that this is the greatest time for new revelations. So if you really study the apocalypse, don't get hung up in the fact that, yes, everyone must face their fear, doubt, and hatred, the seven-headed, ten-horned beast, the two-horned beast, all these horrible things. But those are part of yourself. They're also part of what humanity needs to create in our age. So the good news is, as John pointed out, in the future, we will be walking side by side with Christ. We will no longer just have to listen carefully to the small whisper of your conscience. You'll be able to turn to Christ and ask, what will be the karma that will arise if I do this deed that I wish to do? And in those days, for those who are initiated, you will not do deeds that create negative karma because Christ will be there on one side, Sophia on the other, to balance out what Lucifer and Araman are giving you as temptations, they will be the redemption of that those temptations. And so we need to be thankful in our time that, yes, these are interesting times. But at the same point, they are times for basically hyper-advancement for those who are awake. 
I have something just quick to say. A mammon and dark forces are seeking to crucify the Christ in me. Don't join in with them. Recognize what that means in the theorization of the blood, what it really means. The Christ is in us. They're attacking him in each of us. This is not just about us inside this <laughs> ready-made body. It's about Christ in each of us that is being crucified in our time and during his second coming. Don't join in. Differentiate between good and evil, between what is helpful. Don't let them put him on the cross in your soul. Yes, and I want to thank you both so much. And for those of you that have joined us now and those that join us later, it's in the up to utmost humility that I remind you to strive with wonder, awe, and reverence.